Sometime in 2024, and possibly even in the next few months, a star in the constellation of Corona Borealis is going to go nova. It is inevitable. It happened in 1946, 80 years ago, and approximately 80 years before that in 1866, and approximately 80 years before that, and so on. The star is called T. Coronae Borealis, or TCRB. It is also known as the Blaze Star. This year, 2024, is approaching 80 years after the last nova explosion. And as predicted, the star has already exhibited identical signs to how it behaved before the prior eruption in 1946. Are you ready? Do you also want to image this recurrent nova event? I certainly do, and I am now prepared. The clock is ticking, so let me tell you what I know. I published a video brief, number nine, last month called Going Supernova. It was relatively popular. In researching it, I learned about particular types of binary star systems that are often the source of type 1a supernova events that have been observed in other galaxies. But I now know that binary star systems like that, which possess a white dwarf star and a red giant, don't always follow the same stellar evolutionary path. Perhaps even more frequently among these star systems, a high proportion of the component white dwarf stars release potential energy in a massive burst of thermonuclear radiation without obliterating itself. A typical event like this is called a nova, which is less intense than a supernova, but still being capable of being observed across the entire galaxy. Interestingly, since the white dwarf star that goes nova is not destroyed, it becomes free to initiate the explosive cycle again, possibly going nova again sometime in the future. Depending upon many factors, this reoccurrence may take tens of thousands of years, or thousands of years, or hundreds of years, or maybe even less than a hundred years. Stars in this last 100-year category are often referred to as recurrent nova stars. So I believe this is a unique opportunity. Supernovae are basically unpredictable within relevant human timelines, but recurrent novae are highly predictable. And Blaze Star is on the brink of doing it again. Actually, if you think about it, it has already gone nova over and over again, more than three dozen times, but we haven't yet seen these events. Because its periodicity cycle is 80 years, and the blaze star is nearly 3,000 light years away. TCRB is likely a binary system with stars separated by only 0.54 astronomical units. The star system is between magnitude 10 and 11 in our skies and not visible to the unassisted human eye. But in the prior two novae explosions, it peaked in brightness at around magnitude 2 and 3, making it momentarily among an elite group of the brightest stars in the sky. In 1946, when it went nova, it was only visible to the human eye for about one to two weeks with the entire burst of radiation settling back to magnitude 10 in about four to six weeks. Compared to supernovae, the nova dynamics seem to be relatively fast and transient, so keeping a vigilance on the potential event is necessary. The closest bright star to the blaze star is Epsilon Coronae Borealis, which is magnitude 4.1 and one of only seven stars in the Corona Borealis constellation. This star and the Blaze star are located a little bit to the right or below the center point of an imaginary line drawn between Vega and Arcturus. And in case you did not know, the Corona Borealis constellation is a depiction of a royal crown. Here is a zoomed in field of view simulating the image I captured on February 24th at 3 to 4 o'clock in the morning. I managed to photograph this region of sky with my SV503 ADED telescope from Zerboni and the ASI 533MC planetary camera. The image was taken at 448 millimeter focal length covering 1.45 degrees of sky on each side of the square sensor field of view. 
The photo is 40 minutes of integrated exposure time made by capturing two minute subframes employing a UV IR cut filter. Blaze star is easily visible at the center of the photograph. The brightest star in this field of view is only magnitude 7.75 according to Stellarium. This is an alignment of my image on the right with the Stellarium image so you can see that I have identified the proper star. I learned about this phenomena in the March issue of the Sky and Telescope magazine, but I had to do a little personal research as well because I have no formal training in astrophysics. In fact, I did not even realize there was a difference between a nova and a supernova event at all. When I attempted a web search using Google for Blaze Star, to my surprise and humor was this, a female celebrity who was quite popular back in the 50s and 60s for her temptuous striptease routine and illicit affairs. Interestingly, I vaguely recall her name and fame in my distant memory from childhood. But eventually I found and I watched a few YouTube videos and located information about the actual star in Wikipedia. Some of the critical information is shown here, including detailed information about the nova physics itself. However, to visually show you what is happening in this star system, I borrowed a snippet from another YouTube video made by the Max Planck Institute. There exists a red giant star within the stellar system we refer to as Blaze Star. There also exists a small white dwarf star, much like the one that our Sun will transition into at the end of its life cycle. As I mentioned earlier, these two stars are only 0.54 astronomical units apart, and hence the gravity of the white dwarf star usurps away some of the outer stellar gas material from the red giant. During the transfer, the gas presumably cools a bit and accumulates over time around the white dwarf star forming an accretion disk as depicted in this video. At some point in time, the density of the accretion disk and other critical factors cause it to ignite into a spontaneous runaway thermonuclear explosion that engulfs the entire star system emitting enormous amounts of stellar radiation, including high energy gamma rays and creating a strong and turbulent magnetic field. Of course, visible wavelengths of light also intensify as well, instantly and exponentially. Finally, since neither the white dwarf nor the red giant are destroyed in the explosion, the process settles down and reinitiates again under very similar conditions, building a new accretion disk once again around the white dwarf star. This cycle can happen over and over again across eons of time in many cases. On the Wikipedia page is a data graph of the blaze star system luminosity prior to and throughout the NOVA event. Notice that there was a dip in the star's luminosity that started about nine months prior to the NOVA. That same dip in luminosity has already occurred in 2023, about nine months prior to the making of this video. So we are potentially on the brink of the next eruption. I already captured one pre-NOVA image at 448 millimeter focal length that I showed you previously. But in that photo, there were no bright stars from the constellation of Corona Borealis itself. So I wanted to take another photo with a much wider field of view. This is my usual go-to wide field imaging setup. I use the Ascar FMA 135 astrograph lens in combination with my ASI 53 MC Pro color camera or planetary camera. Here I have it on the AM5 mount with a dual Vixen clamp device to also hold a guide scope and the ASI air controller. On February 27th, I captured 30 minutes of integrated data with the blaze star centered and two constellation stars also in the field of view for reference. Present were both Delta and Epsilon Coronae Borealis. These stars are both around magnitude 4 to 4.5 which is approximately the magnitude we expect to see the blaze star achieve and perhaps exceed during its NOVA event. 
This image is about 4.5 degrees of sky along each edge, and the prior image I took with the Zviboni telescope at 448 millimeters focal length is shown in the center blue box. On the magnitude scale, during the Nova event, the brightness of the blazed star is expected to increase around six levels. And since each magnitude level corresponds to around 2.5 times the intensity, doing the math, an increase of about a hundredfold is expected. It will become another bright star in the sky, temporarily distorting the Corona Borealis constellation. The fact that the blaze star will become temporarily visible to the human eye, I think is an event that everyone can appreciate and photograph. So I also took some images of it using my Canon camera and also with my iPhone. First, let me show you a photo I took with my Canon EOS R8 mirrorless camera. This was a 5 second exposure with a 35mm Canon RF lens. I captured a JPEG image and processed it further in iPhoto to maximize the highlights, basically the stars, and also maximize the contrast and blackness. This resulted in a nice image and it displays about oh, maybe 20 to 50 times more stars than I can actually see with my eyes here under the Bortle Class 7 Plus skies of Yokohama. But even in this image, it is difficult to find the constellation of Corona Borealis, isn't it? So let me help you. Here it is. And the yellow circle shows you approximately where the blaze star is located. You cannot see that 10th magnitude star in this image, but you will when it goes nova. For your information, here are the other nearby constellations and the size of this field of view using the 35mm Canon RF lens. This identification comes from using the online resource astrometry.net. Finally, I managed to capture this image in my backyard using my iPhone SE camera. This smartphone is a lower-end iPhone model and does not have a particularly good camera, nor the ability to take long exposures using manually set parameters like ISO or exposure time. So I used an inexpensive and simple iPhone app called Easy Long Exposure Camera. The settings I employed are also shown. Similar to the prior Canon photo, I also processed this image in iPhoto to enhance the stars. And after doing that, it was easy to identify the constellation of Corona Borealis. By the way, this is approximately what I can see with my own eyes here on a moonless night in Yokohama. The constellation is not very easy to identify. I think if you have a newer model smartphone than I, you should have no problem to document this celestial event. So there you have it. With almost any decent camera and tripod, if you know where to look, midway between Vega and Arcturus, you are likely to be able to capture this once in a human lifetime celestial occurrence. Not many of us will be around when the blaze star goes nova again in 2103 or 4. However, nova events are not all that rare. The European Space Agency has published that around 50 events per year happen in our own Milky Way galaxy alone. I suspect those that are easily visible, or as bright as the blaze star, are probably less common. Now all I have to do is wait. I will be watching the web for reports of the blaze star nova eruption, and I will frequently grab a snapshot to check on it. Remember. The flare in luminosity may only last a week or two. All I can do is hope that the weather will cooperate. I have all my pre-nova images captured and ready for an interesting comparison. If you plan to also capture this event as well, perhaps you can leave a comment and let me know. I love the science that drives this hobby. It constantly fascinates and surprises me, and there are always new things to learn and interesting celestial events surprisingly within the reach of my telescopes and cameras. For me, this is an exciting journey in discovery and appreciation of nature in our vast universe. Here in Yokohama, I am JP Astro Guy, an amateur astrophotographer. My name is Paul Cheesejow, 
and you have been watching Astrophotography Japan. <laughs>